Hello, Tony Burke here again with the fourth in our series of screencasts for construction studies students at the University of Westminster to introduce them to Revit 2014. In this screencast we're going to be building the external walls of our bungalow and we're going to be placing foundations beneath those walls. If you remember from the screencast 3 where we left off, all we really did in that screencast was to establish the levels for our project and to lay out the, um, the area of our site. Now we will be using those levels um, quite extensively during this screencast as we build our walls. Um, I'll just remind you of the site layout for our project. It's a rectangular site measuring 20 meters by 25 meters on which sits a rectangular bungalow, just a simple rectilinear uh, shape for, for the bungalow measuring 14 meters by 8 meters. It's positioned 5 meters in from the front of the site and 3 meters in from uh, either side. Now uh, I'd just like you to re remember those dimensions because we're very shortly going to be using those and it's quite important to state that I want the, um, the bungalow itself to be positioned exactly three meters in from the boundary at the side and exactly five meters in from the boundary at the front of the site. I'll show you also the uh, the form of construction that our walls and foundation take. So the walls comprise a cavity wall with an outer leaf of uh, facing brickwork, a cavity fully filled with insulation and an inner leaf of blockwork. That wall sits on a deep strip trench fill foundation. The top of that foundation is 250 mil below ground level and the base of the foundation is 1200 mil below ground level. So effectively the uh, strip foundation itself is 950 millimeters deep. I'm also going to suggest that for the purposes of this project we make the strip foundation 500 millimeters wide. Now we will be using those dimensions and we will be taking uh, note of those levels as we work our way through the stages of this screencast. So let's move now into um, Revit itself. And this is where we left off, as you'll recall. Uh, we had uh, set out the four corners of our site and we had created a simple plane, a level plane, to represent the area of our site. If we go into the site floor plan, then this is what we see and if you remember when in the last screencast we actually made use of detail lines to set out the topo surface. Now I'm going to use some detail lines again to position the corner of our bungalow on that site and if you remember we want the front face of the bungalow to be five meters in from the boundary at the front and the side face of the bungalow to be three meters in from the boundary at the side. Okay, so let's go into annotate on the ribbon at the top. Um, select a detail line, bring the crosshairs down to this front corner, and as I move it back from that front line, you'll see the dimensions appearing again. I want to create a detail line which is just five meters back from that site. So I'm going to type in using the keyboard 5000, hit enter, and I'm just going to pull out a horizontal line there. It doesn't have to go all the way across. I'm just going to click again, hit enter, and that's created a line. The fact that it uh, doesn't go all the way across the other side is, is irrelevant. It's just to fix the position of the corner. Now I'm going to do the same thing again. Um, so annotate, detail line. This time I'm going to come in from the line at the side of the site. So I want to come in uh, a distance of three meters, so three thousand on the keyboard, hit enter, and I'm going to pull a line up vertically. Again, it doesn't have to go all the way to the top. I just click, hit enter, and now I've created uh, two lines, and at the intersection of those lines, that represents the position of the corner of our bungalow. So I can now make use of that in constructing our walls. Bear in mind that these are just detail lines. They are not visible in any other view uh, of this project. Okay, so we're ready now to put in the walls of the building. To do that, we go up to the ribbon at the top, we select the Architecture tab, and we select Wall. Now, 
in the properties uh, box, the properties palette over here on the left hand side, um, the default wall that's displayed is actually the one we want to use. But just to let you know, if you click on that down arrow, you can see a whole range of different options for our wall construction. And later on in this project, when we're putting in some internal walls, we will be using some of those alternatives. But for the purposes of uh, this screencast, we are just going to use the, uh, the default setting which is a basic wall, a cavity wall comprising an outer leaf of facing brickwork, a 75mm cavity with insulation, a 100mm inner leaf of blockwork and a plaster finish internally. OK, now to draw our walls I could simply um, go to the middle of the screen and um, click a start point, start dragging out the wall and you can see the wall actually appearing on the screen. But if you look closely you'll see that broken blue line that runs through the centre of the wall. What that indicates is that the, uh, the positioning of this wall is effectively being dictated by that location line. So whenever I use dimensions, the dimensions that it's working to is the dimension at that centre line. But if you recall from the position of our um, bungalow on the site, I want to use dimensions which run, run around the outer face of the bungalow. So I don't want a location line which runs along the centre of my wall. So I'm going to hit escape to get rid of that. I'm going to go back to the properties palette and if you look at the constraints section one of the options there is location line and it's currently set to wall centre line. Now if I click on that a little um, drop down menu appears and one of the options I can select is the finish face exterior and that's where I want my location line to be. Now there's a couple of other constraints I need to fix for this wall. Um, the, base of the, the base constraint relates to the position of the base of our wall. Currently it is set to ground level which means that whatever wall I draw on this, pl on this plan the base of the wall will be at ground level. Well, I don't want that. I want the base of our wall to start at the top of our foundation. So I set our base constraint as the top of the foundation. Equally, I go to the top constraint. Currently, it's unconnected. But if I click in the box, look, click on the down arrow, and again, one of the options is the top of the wall. So remember, when we set our levels in the last screencast, this is how we're taking advantage of them because we can now fix the elements of our building in accordance with those levels. So I've now set the type of wall, the location line and the base constraint and the top constraint. So we're ready to actually start drawing our wall and because we've got our detail lines in position I can locate the um, one corner of our bungalow at the intersection of those lines and as I hover over that intersection you will see a little purple cross appears so that now enables me to click and I can actually start pulling out my wall and you will see that the outer face of the wall the location line is running along the exterior face now if you recall from the site layout the side dimension of our bungalow was 8 meters so just as previously when we've you've used these dimension lines I can use the keyboard to simply type in 8000 hit enter and we've drawn one side of our wall I pull it out perpendicular to the first line of the wall the, the, the uh, other dimension of our bungalow is 14 meters so I type 14,000 I hit enter I do the same on this side, it's 8000 again and when I pull out from the bottom of that I can simply run it across to intersect with the other side of the wall and when I see that uh, purple square appear I can click and there is our wall. I've now finished using these detail lines so I can actually just simply now delete them because I don't really need them anymore. So I click on each detail line in turn 
and our detail lines are gone. So there is the layout of our walls and if we now go into our 3D view then we have constructed what looks like an open box um, but if you look carefully and we rotate the 3D view upwards we will see that the walls that we've just drawn penetrate through the surface of the site just as we wanted them to because we wanted our walls to uh, to begin at the top of our foundation. The top of our foundation is 250 mil below ground level. So we have drawn uh, walls to enclose our building. Obviously we don't have any windows or doors in there just yet but we've fixed the um, the outer boundaries of our new building. Okay, so now we're going to put a foundation uh, beneath that wall and in order to do that we um, go back into the uh, site plan, we go up to our ribbon at the top, this time we select structure, we select the structure tab and if we move across here to this area here you'll see that there's a label there that says foundation and within that section of the ribbon there are three types of foundation an isolated foundation, a wall foundation and a slab foundation we're going to select the wall foundation and quite simply all we're going to do is select the walls which we want this foundation to be applied to so first of all I click on this wall and immediately a warning comes up which simply tells me that none of the created elements will be visible on this floor plan. That's because we're operating at a site plan level and the foundations will actually be below this level but I'm not going to worry about that. I'm simply going to check uh, the other walls that we need to apply this foundation to. So I'm going to select that one and that one and that one. Now hopefully if I go now into our 3D view we should now have a wall with a foundation underneath it. So I'm going to just rotate the plan or the, the 3D view upwards and there you will see uh, the wall now that has got a foundation underneath it. Now if you recall from the section I showed you right at the start of this uh, screencast that is not the sort of foundation that we want. We want a deep strip foundation. So I'm now going to edit this foundation. So I'm going to select each section of this foundation in turn. So I point to it, I click, that's highlighted it in blue. I'm going to hold down control and I'm going to click the next section of the foundation and the next one and the last one. So I've now highlighted all sections of my foundation. I go over to the properties palette, I click on edit type and you'll see that the width of the foundation is currently set at 750 and the depth at 275. I'm going to change that because I want the width of my foundation to be 500 millimeters and I actually want the depth to be 950 so I get a nice deep strip foundation. I apply that I click OK, I go back into the 3D view and there we have a beautiful deep strip foundation applied to the underside of our wall. So we've now built our walls and we've got a lovely deep strip foundation beneath it. And if we look in the, uh, the plan view, obviously we won't see the foundations but um, we can go to ground floor level, we can see our walls, if we go to the top of the foundation again we, all we can really see is our walls but if we go back into the 3D view quite clearly we've got our walls and our foundation. In the next screencast we're going to be adding in uh, a ground floor slab um, and in progressive screen in subsequent screen screencasts we'll add in more and more detail but we'll leave it there for the moment